This video is going to be more of a demonstration video between two nonlinear editing systems as opposed to a color correction tutorial. I'm going to play back a video clip on my Canon Vixia camcorder. I'm taking the output of the Canon Vixia camcorder and I've connected it into the input of the TV. There's nothing that unusual about doing that. A lot of people do that. I just want people to see the yellow, the green, and the red. I'm going to play back this video clip using Avid Media Composer and Premiere Pro in just a second. I'm going to use the Blackmagic Design Ultra Studio Monitor 3G to do that. The video clip has finished playing. I'm going to now connect this to some third-party hardware. As you can tell, I've got it connected up to Avid Media Composer. I'm going to hit play really quick. And you should notice the colors look identical to when I played it directly from the camcorder. That is exactly what you would expect. I'll let it play for a little bit longer. Your TV will probably have a theater mode, a sports mode, standard mode, and a vivid mode. Your best bet is to use the standard mode although you could use a vivid mode if you wanted to. That's about it. That's the end of it. Before I can use Premiere Pro, I have to make some adjustments. But in Avid Media Composer, I can left click on here and it'll give like a circle with like a, a line slash through it. Like when you see a cigarette with that circle and that diagonal line to say no smoking, you'll see that come up. That can disable it. Or you can right click it and just click on the new tech piece of hardware. It's in there by default on the Avid Media Composer. But I have to do that so that Premiere Pro can now make use of that Ultra Studio Monitor 3G. All I have to do in Premiere Pro is go to Enable Transmit. Now it's Premiere Pro that's playing this back. Keep in mind, no camera was designed to look good when playing back on an iMac using QuickTime. That is not to say it will not look good. Having said that, no camera was designed to look good playing back on a Dell laptop using OBS Studio. Your camera has an HDMI output to be connected to your TV. Your TV is not affected by an operating system, video display drivers, and software program settings. You can simply connect the camera to your TV and get a good idea of what the image should look like straight out of the camera. Now, with Avid Media Composer, if I click on here, if I make alterations and I'm not careful, and I click on this, we see that looks horrible. All editing systems can look horrible if they're not set up correctly. Let me shut this off real quick. Some people will say Premiere Pro's just horrible for color correcting because it just blows out the image. That's not true. You have to have things set up correct, whether you use an Avid Media Composer, Edius, DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro. They're all going to have a couple parameters that will need to be set up correctly. If I go to the sequence settings, I can make Premiere Pro look a little bit different by going to a different, like going from Rec 601 to 709 to Rec 2100. And I'll do that really quick right now. Let me hit OK. And now you notice that it looks dull and chalky. Now, if I go over to where it says Edit, and I scroll down to Preferences, and where it says General, if I enable Display Color Management and Extend Dynamic Range, and I hit OK, now it looks a lot different. Now, I want to say with Premiere Pro, if I go to Edit, I go to Preferences, and I go down to Playback, You'll see all your third-party hardware on here, your monitors, a FireWire DV converter, anything by Blackmagic Design will show up. I only have the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G connected, but I would have the option to use the Intensity Shuttle if I had the Intensity Shuttle connected. If you notice, I do have the option to use high dynamic range formats like the REC 2020 PQ and the, and the REC 2020 HLG. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card where it says adjust video color settings, you will see a tab that says advanced. Make sure you have the dynamic range set to full instead of limited. 
Before I get to the end of this video, I want to remind everyone that this video is a demonstration video. It is not a tutorial for color correction or using external hardware. I will have tutorials like that in the not so distant future, so don't be upset if you cannot see the GUI of Premiere Pro and Avid that well. Some of you might think the video clip looks a little bit better playing back in the Premiere Pro GUI. Others might think the video clip looks a little bit better playing back in the Avid Media Composer GUI. I don't know what it'll look like once it uploads to YouTube, but you have to keep in mind my computer monitors are on a little bit different angle. And as I've stated in this video, there's parameters that you can set within each of the nonlinear editing systems to make a match almost 100%. In Premiere Pro, I'm going to disable Transmit. Now I can go into the Avid software, right click, turn back on the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G, and as everyone can tell, the colors match. But what you can do is right click, go down to Configure, and we're going to have the control panel of the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G. As you can tell, the Ultra Studio Monitor 3G does not support 4K, but then again, it is only $115. Most 4K cameras can record at 1080p to allow you to test out your camera on professional AV monitors. You can then use the same AV monitor and your nonlinear editing system to see if the colors match 100%. You could have an Acer laptop and use DaVinci Resolve and someone else could have an iMac and use Final Cut Pro 10. The images on the computer screen might not match 100%, but what goes out to the AV monitor when using external hardware will match. That is the benefit of using third-party hardware. The Ultra Studio monitor will also play back interlaced video correctly when connected to broadcast-compliant hardware. If you found this video helpful or informative, you might want to watch some of my other videos.